Jeff Johns, Jeremy Adams, Tim Sheridan, Zermanico, and Michael Jannon pit Flashpoint Batman against King Aquaman as Thomas hunts down the warrior to discover why he had Barry Allen killed and how he is tied to the Flashpoint Earth returning. Jeff Johns, Jeremy Adams, and Tim Sheridan continued the Flashpoint mystery with a rather brisk issue that was pretty proactive when it came to moving its plots forward. Maybe it's just because I read this after some pretty thin plotless comics, but it was really great seeing the plot go along really well and kind of chug along at a great pace. And Thomas being proactive in trying to determine what is going on in this world was really great and actually getting shit done. The return of the Flashpoint Aquaman and Wonder Woman was great, as was the continued exploration of the state of the Flashpoint Earth thanks to all of the wars these two have been perpetrating as well as what other superhero beings have been up to in the time since we last saw the Flashpoint universe. While Thomas looking for answers was great some of the smaller plots really kind of fell by the wayside for the bigger ones like Thomas Wayne adopting Dexter Dent which never really is touched on we see it briefly at the start of the issue and then Thomas kind of just leaves the boy in the care of Oswald Cobblepot which in an itself is kind of like a cool fun plot with Uncle Ozzy teaching you how to shoot that's kind of fun and wish we got to see a little bit more of that. Ticking clocks and time is obviously a big part of this issue and series thanks to the time travel aspect as well as it being tied to Watchmen and Doomsday Clock and I like the use of the 11 minute missing plot and that being teased and sprinkled throughout the issue and I have a feeling it might have something to do with Batman of Earth Zero messing with time to try and find where his father is and try to get to Flashpoint again. Something that is kind of hinted at at the end of the issue so I'm very much looking forward to seeing where that plot goes. Zermanico and Michael Jannon tackle the issue's artwork and the book consistently looks fantastic, with Zermanico doing a bulk of the work and Jannon only actually doing two pages, but I did like that each artist deals with a different Earth, with Zermanico doing the Flashpoint stuff and Jannon doing the Earth Zero stuff, giving each its own unique style and character look which was really great and kind of made it really easy to separate that you're reading two different sides of the story. Flashpoint Beyond Issue 1 really got its plots moving forward nicely for a first issue, exploring more of the Flashpoint world while also teasing out some really cool story beats that hint at a larger threat looming over Flashpoint and maybe even the main DC Universe as a whole. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. Flashpoint Beyond Issue 1 heads to the Wayne Manor where the news reports on the Atlantean attack on England and how the Atlanteans have seized the entire country, beating the Amazons as King Arthur tells the world that they will retreat from his oceans and turn over all of their nuclear weapons and come under his authority within 12 hours or he will turn the oceans red with their blood. Thomas meanwhile sits in silence, eating dinner with Harvey Dent's now orphan son Dexter as he thinks about killing Joe Chill and many other criminals but it never satisfied him but that was before Barry Allen arrived on his world and told him about Bruce and how on his world Thomas and Martha died instead of Bruce, leading to Bruce becoming Batman and one that instead of punishing the world like Thomas did, he decided to protect it and those in it. He knows a just world however is a child's dream and he knows that more now than ever. Thinking about his current situation with everything being altered back to normal, he knows Aquaman is involved since one of his assassins was sent to kill that world's Barry Allen, which took Thomas's best chance at getting the world back to the way it was. Oswald comes by, talking about Dent's death before seeing the man's son is there. Thomas says that he's going out of town and he needs Oswald to look after Dexter while he's gone, since he can't trust anyone else, especially since the boy is a witness to his father's death, so he might be useful sometime down the line. Thomas quickly introduces the boy to Oswald, who awkwardly gives his condolences to the boy as he quietly asks Thomas what he is meant to do with the child and how does he even feed him. Thomas knows he'll figure it all out as he opens the secret door to his bat cave. Oswald notices that Thomas's clock is 11 minutes slow and the hero knows that it's broken, telling his friend that he's going fishing. Oswald is scared as Dexter creeps up on him, telling the boy not to do that as he asks him what he wants to do. Dex says that he wants to learn to shoot a gun, surprising Oswald who wonders what type he wants to try. Thomas meanwhile suits up into the bat suit as he goes over his theories, thinking reverse flash altered the past but it doesn't make sense as to 
why Thorn would let him live, wondering if this is meant to be some type of torture thanks to him stabbing him in the past. He also wonders how Aquaman factors into this as he watches the news that shows Director Waller appealing to Congress to draft every metahuman convict in the country into the United States Army, all of whom will fall under the control of a being known as the Son of Saturn. The news also reports Oliver Queen was killed recently by Freedom Beast, who claimed that Queen murdered his daughter and the Beast's lover. Thomas retrieves Joe Chill's gun, knowing the Garden of Eden is overgrown and filled with weeds, rot, and thorns, along with him. He knows that Aquaman will tell him what he wants, or he will gut him like the fish he is. In England, the Atlanteans have taken over the entire country, flooding huge sections of it as the news counts down to Waller's vote on the expansion of Task Force X, but they report that the vote was interrupted by Senator Thomas Wright, who had taken the Senate hostage with a human bomb. David Knight, the former hero Starman, warns the world that something is coming from beyond the stars, as in Keystone City, every clock falls behind by 11 minutes, with scientists theorizing that the entire city fell out of sync with the rest of time. The Superman meanwhile has been spotted, prompting people to wonder if he's going to rescue England from the Aquaman, as Miraclo is approved by the FDA for mass production, and the world's nukes are beginning to be pointed at the British Parliament, where Aquaman now resides. The fate of Wonder Woman is still a mystery to the world, as inside Parliament, the defeated warrior is kept watch on by Atlanteans, who continue to gloat over her being captured and her people being killed. Wonder Woman calls one closer, with one of the men telling her how his family was killed by the bloodthirsty Amazonians. Diana calls him closer and she uses her teeth to rip out some of the man's tentacles on his face. The other guard had warned him not to get too close, as suddenly they see a shadow in the water below them. Batman appears, killing the guards before approaching Wonder Woman, who thought he was dead. She asks to be let loose, but Batman didn't come there for that, wanting to take her lasso of truth instead. Thanks to her being blinded by the lasso, Diana says that she will kill him if he touches it. Thomas is aware and knows that it's the only thing tying her to the pole, and he says that he only wishes to borrow it since he needs information, and in exchange, she gets to live, and she might have enough time to free her sisters before the entire country sinks into the sea. Diana wonders what will happen then, since they can't just go back to their island and forget everything that has happened, but Thomas tells her to do whatever she wants, since it doesn't matter to him. Arthur meanwhile listens to his ticking clock as he ponders his orb, when suddenly the lasso falls around his neck as Batman begins choking him, demanding to know who sent the assassins to kill Barry Allen and who asked him to do it. Arthur resists the lasso, grabbing it and flipping Batman over the throne. Batman knows that no one can resist the lasso, demanding he answer the question, so Arthur is soon forced to do so, knowing that whoever sent the killer, it wasn't him. Now he's going to take Batman's head. And that's the truth. Oswald contacts Thomas, but the man says he's a little busy, but Oswald reveals that their casino was hit by a bomb and was destroyed. Arthur drops Batman, telling him that he's not the first to try and stop him and try and save the world, but they fail to realize that Aquaman is saving the world instead. Thomas realizes that with him going after Aquaman and the casino blowing up, someone wanted him out of Gotham. Arthur says that Diana will burn the world to the ground thanks to Thomas releasing her, as Thomas continues wondering if someone posed as Aquaman to use the scavenger and make him think it was Aquaman behind this. The clock strikes 12 as Arthur goes for his glowing orb, intending on sinking the entire country, knowing that Diana and her Amazons will die on the island as it sinks. He notices his trident is missing from his throne as he is stabbed in the back by Wonder Woman with it. Wonder Woman says that Arthur's reign is over and so is man's as the king dies, telling his former lover that he loved Mera, and Diana killed the only queen he ever loved. Diana tells Thomas that their deal is done, demanding he leave and tell the world that she is coming for them. Thomas knows that it doesn't matter and nothing on this world matters. As Thomas returns home, news of Aquaman's death has spread as does Wonder Woman's takeover of England. England, with her moving her forces into what is left of Europe. Thomas hears a gunshot, finding Oswald teaching Dexter how to shoot a gun at random things from throughout the manor. Thomas calls Oswald over for a word, and the man knows this is about the casino, wondering what they are going to do. Thomas wants to check the security cameras, but Oswald reveals that they were disabled, really hoping that Thomas is going to find out who did this and make them pay. Thomas knows he always does, as he disappears from Oswald's sight, prompting the man to go back to keeping an eye on 
decks and teaching him how to use a firearm. On Earth Zero, the Flash arrives in the Batcave asking if Bruce is okay since he felt something. Thinking that Eobard Thorn is back and he's tried to tap into the Speed Force again, having tracked him to the Batcave and maybe he's masking his trail. Batman reveals that since Thorn was last in the cave, he's beefed up security with weapons that mimic Captain Cold's absolute zero gun, positioning them all over the cave so if Thorn was there, he'd be turned into a popsicle. He assures Barry that he's okay as the Flash speeds off to continue his search, revealing to Bruce that he and Jay Garrick are getting together to search with the Justice League and the JSA on standby. He knows that something is disrupting time and they don't know who or what it is, but they'll find out very soon. Bruce wishes him good luck as he speeds out of the cave. Corky Baxter reveals himself, telling Batman that the Flashes will find out what he is doing and while he can't stop Batman, they can. He tells the hero that it's not too late to undo this as Janie Slater's watch continues to tick on, but Batman knows it already is too late. 